Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis here, and I wanted to cover a lot of things that are upcoming with you guys. We've got patch 2.0.0 coming tomorrow on August 28th, which is really going to be the big patch. Then we've got Forsaken a week later, which is really going to kick off all of year two. We've got a lot of changes coming in both, and I wanted to cover as much as I could with you guys to help you prepare, what to do over the next week, what to look forward to, and just a few things you can do today if you want to before the patch goes live tomorrow. So, one more thing before I get to that, I want to let you guys know I am doing a giveaway. The link will be down below. It is a Gleam giveaway, uh, so check that one for the description. And here's the deal. What I'm going to do is basically make sure that whoever wins this giveaway will be able to play Destiny 2 all of Year 2 on me. So if you've played Year 1, you're going to get Forsaken in the Annual Pass straight up. If you haven't played Destiny in, I don't know, since Destiny 1 or you gave up after whatever, we're going to get the Collection and, of course, the Annual Pass as well. Either way, what I would like to do is make sure whoever wins this thing, Destiny 2... You can play it all year long for year two. So check the link in the description below. Honestly, thank you guys for all the support. It's been awesome. And my hype is behind this game. And I want to let you guys know that I want to make sure at least one of you guys gets to one more of you gets to enjoy this full thing. And just for the support from you guys, I'd like to make somebody's day by doing Forsaken completely and all out. So look at the link in the description below. It's pretty easy to follow along and look forward to making somebody's day this weekend. It's going to end on Sunday at noon. So it will end on Sunday at noon central time. Uh, so keep that one in mind and then I will probably see who the winner is, see about going live, doing a little update for that one. I will reach out to you guys. I will likely do it digital, be it a PlayStation gift card, something like that. Uh, physical copy is going to be a little harder to get it to you on time, obviously, because it's somewhat short notice, so digital collection will probably be the way this goes. But that being said, let's jump into first Destiny Update 2.0.0. This is everything that is basically think of a preload for Forsaken. So the main things we're going to look over are weapon slot changes, uh, milestones and challenges, we've got the updates to the director, uh, heroic store missions are going to be a thing. Uh, bulk shader deletion in the vault. That's main stuff on the calendar. So let's take a look at those first. Weapon slots is the giant change first. So right now, as we go through, we've got a kinetic. We've got an energy, which are still basically the same thing. Just one has a damage type, one does not. And then you have your power slot. Come tomorrow, uh, when this patch is actually done going live, and hopefully this is something you guys can view as we go through, I will potentially do a run through of the patch notes as well if there's a whole lot more stuff because I'm sure there will be for sandbox tweaks and exotic changes, things like that. I'm not going to cover that in this video. This is going to be overall game changes. Patch notes, you know, time to kills, things like that. Once we know those for sure without speculating on we know this about some, we don't know this about others, I'd rather just do it all at once for you guys, make it a bit more simple. But I'm going to cover the main system changes so you know what to expect. If you guys hear my dogs in the background, sorry about that. So, weapon slots. We know what we've got now. These are going to be changing mostly to ammo types being your distinction. So right now, what's going to happen is everything that's typically falling in your first two slots, be it kinetic or energy, is going to use kinetic ammo. So that's everything from scout rifles, pulse rifles, auto rifles, sidearms, hand cannons, SMGs, and then what you would consider some power weapons, but basically that's honestly limited to... Um, Grenade launchers that are single shot, so Aura Wings Maul is a prime example. Also, trace rifles are going to be staying basically where they are. Those are going to be in a different type of thing, so I'll get to those in a minute. But those are the ones that are going to be in these first two slots. Now, you could put a kinetic in a kinetic right here. It just depends on where they fall. The first slot is going to be weapons that still don't have an arc, a solar, or a void damage type. And in this slot, they potentially are. But if I want to use a scout rifle here and a hand cannon here, they're both going to use kinetic ammo. Kinetic ammo is meant to be your readily available, typically something you're not going to run out of type of ammo. It's also going to be obviously a lower damage potential because of the type of weapons they are. Your second type, which are also going to be usable in these two slots, depending on what it is, are going to be your special ammo. That's going to be shotguns, sniper rifles, Fusion Rifles, which all come from your power category, 
Trace rifles are still there, and as I was saying, your single shot grenade launchers, they call them breech loaded, those are going to be also energy um, special weapons. So, not energy, but special weapons. Now, some are going to move farther than others. Uh, Hawthorne shotgun and silicone Naroma, for example, um, those are both going to be kinetic, just straight up going to move up there. Some of the other ones, say like Orwings Mall, might just be a, you know, a void energy weapon right in this slot. But the idea is, if I have a shotgun, if I have a sniper rifle here that I'm going to use, say I've got silicone Naroma, and then here, say I want to use Shepard's Watch. If I do both of those as sniper rifles, I can technically have two sniper rifles in there and a rocket launcher. Now, is it going to be hard to manage ammo? I think that's going to be the main balancing factor. That honestly, if you give Bungie some time, they should balance it out, but my hunch is it's not going to be perfect at first. In PvP, they're going to be very limited. In kinetic ammo, you're not going to be too limited on in PvP. Special ammo, you are going to have two bullets, basically. Two shotgun shots, two sniper shots. So if you have two shotguns, you get one shot in each. So the balancing of that is going to be probably better to be efficient at, say, if I do want a sniper rifle in this slot, I'm probably going to want to go with a, you know, mid-range, auto rifle, hand cannon, something kinetic so I have a decent amount of ammo so I'm not completely out. Now, if you want to go gutsy and play a specific role, you can. Uh, you could still, as they say, use three shotguns. You could still use also three sniper rifles, depending on how things fall. Because we have Whisper of the Worm and Darcy that are actually going to stay. So we know it's going to be a kinetic, and we know it's going to be energy. Those are going to be in your first two slots. A-Mobile will be your dependent factor. Power weapons will include rocket launchers, obviously. Swords, which hopefully get a boost. Uh, Drum-loaded grenade launchers. By that, I mean something like Prospector that has a pretty sizable clip, and you put the drum in there when you reload. You're also going to have powerful weapons of specific types. So you've got Darcy and Whisper of the Worm. They're both insanely powerful. Um, Whisper especially. It belongs in the power slot. You've got linear fusion rifles, both Sleeper, Tarantula, things like that. Also things like Tractor Cannon. Legend of Acreus, those are all going to be staying right where they're at in the power weapon slot because they are beastly, they are very high damage potential, and your power weapon ammo is probably going to stay relatively the same, would be a guess. Now a couple things to make note of when the patch launches tomorrow. Some things are going to have to move. As I was saying, if I had a Hawthorn, Hawthorne's shotgun on this character, it's going to lose its damage type, whatever I have on it, so don't even try and change it. It's not going to matter. Uh, it's going to go up and be a kinetic shotgun. But as you notice, my inventory is here is full. What that would then in turn do is go into my Postmaster. So, that being said, there are a list of specific weapons that you're going to want to make sure you either put them in your vault so they don't move that far, or you want to make sure you have space on your Postmaster and in those slots so if they do move, you don't lose them. If your Postmaster is full and the slot that they're going to is full, you have a chance to potentially lose them, which you do not want to do. So, make sure you have space, dump as much in your vault, and I'll get to, get to a couple ways where you can find some space in your vault as well. The ones you want to make note of. Silicone Neroma, Alone as a God, The Frigid Jackal, Balagant, Perfect Paradox, Hawthorns, Field Forge Shotgun, and Shepherd's Watch. It's actually another one of these that I mentioned. So this one's actually going up there as well to be a basically straight up kinetic. The ones I listed are going straight to the top. Now other ones, say, I can't think of another sniper rifle right now because I haven't used much more than Whisper in a while. Uh, some are just going to go and be probably special weapons with a damage type of arc solar or void and probably going to fall in this slot. So if I had a one that would fell in here, and again, this is full, it would go to my postmaster. So spend some time, make some space, you will thank yourself for doing that. So that is what we know about those. We're going to have to see how the sandbox changes work if, you know, sl you know, high impact slow firing pulse rifles and scout rifles actually get a boost to damage. Uh, hand cans we know are going to get a boost, but all of the time to kill and that specific stuff is going to be in the patch notes. Also, the changes to supers and grenades and things like that, there are going to be changes. I will cover those when I go through the patch notes later, so I'm not going through those specifically. 
but there are going to be a bunch of changes to those. We talked about some of those during our Flashpoint. You can check that one out, but there's probably going to be a giant, giant list of patch notes that we'll go through a bit later. So the nice thing is we have a week to prepare. We have a week to toy around if I want to put like Silicon Neuroma right here. I want to have an auto rifle for that middle range and then I can have whatever I want down here in the power slot to go for beast mode when I need to. And you can mix it up. You can leave it just as you have right now. If I go hand cannon, scout rifle, and sniper, beast mode sniper, this still could be a viable option. But if I want to go sniper, auto rifle, rocket launcher, I'm going to be able to do that as well. Say I want to go scout rifle, shotgun, and, you know, drum grenade launcher or sleeper simulant. You got a lot more options, which I think is really cool. And this is one of those moments where I do have to say this. I want to say that Bungie has gone through quite a bit in their first year of Destiny 2. It has its ups, it definitely had many downs, we know they've had a lot of, you know, learning to do with changes that they thought might be good, they tried to casualize some things, they tried to, you know, mix up the damage types, and they're going back to some stuff in Destiny 1. And everybody's like, oh, it's just going back to Destiny 1 stuff. Well, they learned, but I like, honestly, the fact that they had to go through these growing pains to get to a better place. Things like catalysts with exotics were probably made because the exotics were too blah in the first place. Should that have happened? I wouldn't think so, but as they were trying to keep everything really, really balanced, they kind of balanced it too far. Well, now we have catalysts that make all of these things kind of cooler in a fun way. You're gonna earn them so the orbs on multi-kills are still a thing, and then you have to use the weapon for a while to actually unlock the catalyst completely. Some are more ridiculous than others, I've been working on my uh, Graviton Lance Catalyst without doing it the cheese way, and I'm at like 35%. At some point, I'm going to get this thing done, but man, it has taken a while. At some point, I've just got to go farm the specific spots that make this easier. Just haven't really done that, especially in the past month, because I've been working on my Solstice Armor. But the main thing is, the same thing with this weapon slot changes. If they just reverted back to Destiny 1, we wouldn't have this new change where you have flexibility. And I honestly think that's kind of cool. Because there was like one, you know, main slot sniper rifle in all of Destiny 1 and it was an exotic. So I mean, a few things jumped around with slots from exotics, but now you've just got more flexibility and it's a new system. So I like what I would consider the evolution of Destiny going forward. It's Has it been a tough road for basically the year one of both games? Absolutely. Destiny 2 is even probably harder than Destiny 1 because we had high expectations coming in and they got shot really far down. But we've come a long ways and I honestly can't wait to see what is to come. So cross our fingers, this path going forward is pretty amazing. Next, we've got milestones. Now milestones right now are kind of your checklist for the week. This is my hunter, I literally grinded him out during Solstice, so yeah, I haven't done the other campaigns, but leave me alone. That being said, they're going to be changing. So, you've got things like your heroic strikes, your call to excuse me, call to arms. I swear I'm gonna have a burp in every one of my videos. I'm sorry, no big deal. Uh, your flashpoint. Different things are gonna be changing. So, for one, your weekly resets for a couple things are gonna be different. Flashpoint specifically seems to be confirmed. I'm not sure about call to arms and doing your strikes, if that's gonna be on the same cadence as the flashpoint, but the flashpoint they say is on a four day reset. Now, I don't quite know what a four day reset means to them because we have seven days in a week. So either it's every four days and it's just gonna get really screwy, um, or it's like, hey, we have a re weekly reset on Tuesday. Okay, then we have a weekly reset on Saturday. Then we have a weekly reset on Wednesday. Then we have a weekly reset on Sunday. And if it's on a four day rotation, that's gonna get kinda goofy. My hunch, and honestly crossing my fingers and hope, is the fact that it's going to be, say, Tuesday and Friday are resets for some things, and then others are going to be weekly resets like raids and bigger stuff. It's my hope, honestly, because if it's every four days, it's going to be weird, and you guys are going to see some videos from me at some oddball times. But we're going to cross that bridge when we go through it. But the nice thing is it gives you more time to work on powerful gear, because I honestly feel like the grind up to max power level in Forsaken is going to be longer. Um, but the other reason I'm saying this is because they're going to change where you actually see them. This milestone list that I've got here is not going to be nearly as populated. Now I have campaign stuff to do, that would logically show up here. Um, if there's some brand new thing that launches in Forsaken, it's probably going to pop up here as well. But, but say Call to Arms and Heroic Strikes, those are going to be in their respective bubbles. 
Strikes. Once I go into the strike bubble, if I'm looking at the heroic strike playlist, or towards the bottom it says rewards, rare gear, and legendary gear. It looked like in the picture they showed. Below that is going to be line. Zero of three heroic strikes done for the week, and powerful gear reward will sit there. Same thing as if you're in the crucible playlist. You're going to be looking at quick play, and you'll see, you know, your call to arms or whatever they're going to call it, and say you need 50 crucible kills. Cool. Do that one, you're going to be still able to still work on that one. I don't quite know the confirmation of the reset of all activities, but the flashpoint is also probably going to be just on a planet. So if I hover over a planet and say the flashpoint is on Io, should show a little line here and some yellow text and a little uh, icon next to it, like these icons are next to the travel on my screen now, Io would potentially have a little yellow icon next to it over here, and you would be able to either hover over or click on it, potentially hover over and see, hey, flashpoint has 50% progress. Those are going to change. There's also going to be a change that your pursuits category is also going to be used for other stuff as well that are going to no longer be in milestones. If there's something that's involved with a quest, it's going to be in here. Your bounties are still going to be in here, and those are going to be changing. I'll cover that a little bit later. Um, but all of the general look of your director, um, milestones specifically, is going to be fairly cleaner. And that way it's not just going to be like, hey, here's your checklist. It's not just going to be slapping you in the face and what to do. If you want to go do strikes and you hover over, yeah, you'll probably have some stuff to do. Crucible the same way. If Titan has an activity that's on it for the week, it might have a little thing next to it. You're going to actually have to jump into the activities to figure out what you want to go do. And if you do go play something, likely you'll have something if you check it out first. If I'm like Nexus, okay, Flashpoint not here. Okay, cool, this is up. Let's go. So it's nice that they're giving you a little more options. Also, I'm going to switch screens now and show you guys a picture of the new director. Uh, as you guys can tell, I'm not really moving my mouse around, but most things have shifted to the left of the year one planets. Most of that's gone over to the left hand side. You can also see the strikes, the crucible and gambit, which heads up that is going to have a free day, September 1st for 24 hours from 12 PM central time. Basically, the last 24 hours of my giveaway, heads up and a reminder, you will be able to play Gambit. I will probably be streaming a decent amount of that. If you are on PC, I am Ebontis number 1305. Hit me up. Uh, I've got my number down in the description, but if you add me as a friend, say what's up. Definitely love to play some with you guys. It's going to be crazy to see how Gambit goes. But as you notice, those are on the bottom. That's where if you hover over strikes, you'll be able to see what's down there below. Off to the right-hand side of the main map, you're now going to find the Tangled Shore, where we're probably going to do the campaign. And it may look a little open at that when you start Forsaken, because probably once you go through with that, and then as the campaign leads into the Dreaming City, I'm sure that will open next. I don't imagine it just kind of being there to start, just to give you the reveal of the Dreaming City being a new thing. So... Milestone, challenges, all that type of stuff is going to be moving around and updating, so I honestly can't see. Challenges, like when you go into a planet and you hit tab and you look on your right hand side and it says kill a hydra, do a patrol, loot a lost sector in this place. Those potentially are likely going to be bounties from your, you know, location NPC. So Devrim K on EDZ potentially is going to have some bounties for you to go do that day. Give you a reputation, give you some tokens, actually not tokens, I'll get to that in a little bit, tokens are changing, and other things. One more piece that we're going to see as well. Um, for PvE activities, your meditations are going away, so Ikora is no longer be going to be giving you your meditations to go replay stories. Now, I don't know if the story missions are straight up going to be on the map to just go click on and do as you would before. I'm kind of thinking they might be. They probably worry about cluttering this thing up, but there's honestly so much space on it. I'd rather see everything smattered all over his thing so it looks like there's a ton of stuff to do. But heroic story missions are going to be a thing come tomorrow. So on the 28th, those are going to be a new rotation. We get to see how those work. Now, one thing about heroic story missions, strikes, which are getting a massive change, which I'll cover here in a minute. And basically anything that's got modifiers in your general PvE stuff, probably besides things like prestige raids, which those are really a separate animal. But most general activities that are going to have modifiers, say it's like a Singe, Arc, Solar, or Void, and, you know, a Heavyweight modifier, or Grenadier, and then Blackout, those are going to be universal across all activities, whether it's a heroic story, whether it's a strike playlist. Now, the 28th, the universal modifiers may not be in effect, but for sure that will be the sake in Forsaken. Be, this, be that way in Forsaken. <laughs> 
But yeah, it's going to be nice if you run in and you're like, okay, so it's Arc Singe, so I've got my Darcy, I've got my Arc Scout Rifle, or Sniper Rifle, for example, and I've got my Hand Cannon. I'm good to go if I go from Strikes straight into the Heroic Story Mission. I don't have to move stuff around that day. Now, the next day you probably will, because it's going to be, I think, on a daily rotation for the modifiers like Grenadier, just kind of the, as they are with the Strikes for now, and it's probably going to have a weekly rotation for Arc Singe. So... Kind of looking forward to more things having modifiers, heroic story missions coming back, actually being a thing to grind through and go replay the story missions as a more difficult item, but also a way for you to get some powerful gear potentially. That's going to be a lot of fun. We'll see how quick that reset is. It could be on a daily. We'll see. Uh, power level changes are also going to be one thing that covers in Forsaken. I'll get to those in a little bit. Uh, let's go into your inventory and talk about one vault space is coming tomorrow. 200 slots in your vault. So if you do pack your vault full of stuff today, you'll have space to move stuff around tomorrow. And if you do pack your vault full of stuff today and make space for weapons moving around, you're probably going to be safer. And then come tomorrow, you've got a week before Forsaken. Spend some time, move stuff around, you'll be good. Now, if you're tight on space right now, there's a couple things let's cover in your inventory. For one, you guys notice I have these bounties. If you do want to prep for Forsaken, just a quick aside, you can start trying to farm bounties and save them. Now, I don't know if there's only a set number of bounties, so you're not going to be able to hold on to that many, but if you complete a bounty, so you guys see it says expires in 22 hours. If I don't finish it, it goes away, but if I finish it, they're active. Now, no one knows if these are just going to like null and void out when Forsaken actually goes live, or if they're going to stay in our inventory, our hunch is they're a fairly new thing and bounties are going to be a thing you're likely just going to be able to turn these in. So if you can load up your pursuits inventory between your characters and actually have quite a bit of fun stuff to like turn in real quick, you might get a quick level boost. That's up to you. Some people just want to experience it naturally, not grind the stuff out. If you do want a quick little boost when it comes to Forsaken, it's our guesstimation is as good as yours on if this is going to be a thing. So your strikes and your crucible, something to grind out for your bounties. But if you're looking for space in your vault, your modifications are going to be your first spot to do it. Now, you guys can see I actually have some space right now because I already did a decent amount of clearing, but I wanted to show you guys what I'm talking about. Any legendary mod you have right now is guaranteed to turn into a mod component. Mod components are what you're going to use to turn into the gunsmith to get the new year two mods. Those are going to be live with Forsaken. But what you can do now to be ready to go, you know, spend an hour at the gunsmith and turn in a whole bunch of mod components and get some new mods, or clear out some space for your vault. They have confirmed the new, the old mods are not going to do anything for you. The only thing the mods are going to do is if I want to change a weapon to a damage type and I want to lock it in outside of the ones that are there, you can use these for that. So I might delete these last as you look through the list. If I didn't mention it already, there is a list of weapons and it says what damage type they're going to turn to. I'm going to switch over to that real quick as I'm on this topic, so hold that thought. So I will have a link to this down in the description below, but this is the Reddit thread from Datamind, the real seven. Thank you for this one, but potentially it has been Datamind. Now, the reason I think this is accurate is mostly because the things that are specifically locking in that Bungie has told us, this was correct. So your guess is as good as ours. If this is actually going to be 100% right, we don't know. But if this is your best guess, it's going to be in... Um, all of this is going to be accurate. My example that I'm going to use is my scout rifle. The Mananan, Mananan, which I can never say that right. Mananan, sure. The SR4, it's going to be void. Now, what I have on my character right now is a void and also an arc. Now... I really like that scour rifle. It's got explosive rounds. I like how it feels. It's got a decent clip to it. It does decent damage. Feels solid for me for most PvE activities. Now, if you don't get to this soon enough and your weapons lock in as they are, I wouldn't worry too much about it because honestly, most things in year two are going to be better. They're going to have more random roll slots. You're going to have better master working potential with the mods of your choosing. All of that is likely going to make most year one stuff probably irrelevant even your better devils now not we don't know what weapons are going to come forward better devils we know is one that is going to be a thing in forsaken that's still attainable as a year two weapon we don't know what those are going to be but anything from year one you want and i would use this as kind of a transition period if i'm leveling up through forsaken and i want a reliable weapon that i know that i know i'm good with 
I love the Mananan for pretty much anything, but I want to have different options depending on if, what the weekly reset is, what the singe is. I want to have options. So, if I know I can go pull a Mananan from the collections, which is where everything in year one is going to be. If you got it from basically Warmind's launch onward and you had it in your inventory, you're going to be able to go pull it out in year two. So for me, what the option is going to be, I'm going to go be able to get a Void Mananan Scout Rifle. So what I would want to do to have all three options, take the other two that I have. One of them's already art, so I'm good with that one. The one that is void, I'm going to turn that one into solar. So then if I go pull one from the collection when Forsaken launches, I have all three options. And that's just me. Um, there's other ones. And the reason I think this is correct is mainly because the ones that I know are locking in the Bungie Confirm. Silicon Aroma, Kinetic. Shepherd's Watch, Kinetic. The Ikolo shotgun and the Ikolo sniper rifle both are going to lock into solar. They were trying to take these away from the tractor cannon absolute melting. Understandable, some things are a little broken. They're not trying to nerf too much, they're just trying to keep things in check. But the things that are specifically going to be kinetic, Perfect Paradox, Hawthorne's shotgun, are accurate, and the ones that are locking the solar are correct. So... Your guess is as good as mine as if this is accurate, but it sure seems to be accurate. So if there's anything you really enjoy using, I'm going to go back to the screen now. For me, the example of something that I really enjoy is Curtain Call. I don't have all the sins of the past. I know it's got a bigger blast radius, but this is a rocket launcher that does hit cluster bombs. And I want to make sure I have an option for all of them. So I actually have three Masterwork Curtain Calls, one Arc, so one Solar, one Void. As I have three, I don't have to worry about, you know, which one I'm going to switch it to. They're all going to lock in as they are. But come tomorrow, when the patch goes live, and you're only going to be able to play up until about 9.30 a.m. Pacific, so about 11.30 a.m. You're going to have some downtime basically tomorrow, is what I'm going to tell you. But I'll get to the timing of things later. Uh, but once Destiny goes down, your stuff is going to lock in. So Curtain Call, this one's going to lock into Void. This one would lock into Solar. This one would lock into Arc. I need to switch this one over to Solar. Any of these are going to lock in. Kinetic's Kinetic. They're staying where they are. And then things like the Ikelos Shotgun and Sniper, don't even switch them. They're going to do it automatically and just turn into Solar. Can't do anything about it. Um, but all those things are just going to be locked. So if I have Orwings Maul and I want to turn one into... You know, if I want to turn this one into solar, for example, for whatever reason. Do that today, because those are going to lock in. So, that being said, we're kind of back to where we were in the inventory. So with your mods, as you break these down, you're going to be getting the mod components. These are going to be something you're going to want to save. Do not delete your mod components, let me repeat that. This stack that you're collecting, I hate that it's there, but I need to like use something, because it always sticks it right up here in the corner. I hate that you can discard this thing. I wish I could just lock it, but I can't. But do not discard regard this, uh, because you would be really sad you can't go to the gunsmith and buy stuff. Now, they're not going to want to let you farm a bunch of this stuff. Now, if you have a bunch like I do, I might be able to buy, like, 10 mods, which could be cool. Um, but either way, it's just... Sorry, my dogs. I'm sure there's a delivery at my door. Um... But the mod components themselves are what you're going to use to buy the new mods. That will be in Forsaken on September 4th. But if you need space, clear out your mods now. Because honestly, these are not going to change anything. Like this arms one. I'll just get five mod components. And then I'm good to go. Make it more space. Move more things out of my vault so I can move more guns and armor into it. At least until we get 200 slots tomorrow. You're going to get the slots tomorrow so you can really move stuff around after that. But you need to make sure you don't lose anything. So if you need to make some space, this is a good way. And then, honestly, these aren't going to do you any good come Forsaken. So you may as well just get rid of them and not spend them. The other reason is they give you five level. That's not going to happen anymore. It's just going to be a mod that has an effect on... You know, your weapon's range or stability or maybe it's on something in your armor for ammo type or whatever the mods are going to do. They're not going to give you the plus five. That's going away. So if like my character here, if it's 400 armor, it's going to be 400 tomorrow anyway when this stuff goes into effect or at least when Forsaken launches. So it doesn't matter if it's 400 or 405. It's all going to flat out where it's at without the mods. So there's no point in putting them into it. So save your mods, delete them, not delete them. Do not delete the mod components, just break these down to dismantle them into their mod components and save them. Also coming tomorrow is Bulk Shader Deletion. It says in increments of 5. Now if it's going to be 
five at a time and I still have to go through and I have to delete 250 of these things, that's going to take me a while still. So I'm hoping I can do 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and then delete 30 at a time if I want to. Um, shaders are going to hopefully be fixed in Forsaken because if you have a shader that you want and it costs just Glimmer to go get. So if I break this one down, what do I get? Takes 10 bright dust. For me, to when I break the shader down, it's going to cost me bright dust to go get that shader back. But if you play enough, bright dust hopefully will be a thing. But as you break your shaders down, especially these legendary ones, you only need like five for an armor set if you're going to do that. And maybe a couple weapons, those are going to move around anyway. But if you want to do an armor set, you're only going to need five. So it's not going to cost you a lot anyway. So most of your shaders are probably going to get deleted and gone as it is. Bumblebee is kind of a cool one. Cerulean Divide, you just won't have to hold on to them anymore, which will be nice, and then hopefully this whole crap of inventory that's in my vault as well will go away. So that will come tomorrow as well. The other things coming for tomorrow are pretty minimal. Um, most everything else is going to be coming with Forsaken. So I was talking about the gear collections. That's basically everything from year one that does not have random rolls, that is basically stuck as it is, is going to be in there. Be it armor or weapons is all going to be in your collections that you can go retrieve. The damage types, as you saw, will be locked in on the weapons. Armor is armor, just whatever it probably is. So like the Dead End Cure typically has the Heavy Hunter armor, and that's pretty much just what it's going to lock in at. Uh, you've got weapon randomization, which is going to be coming. We'll know more about that as we go through and actually see some of that stuff. The mod system, once we get more details on that, I'll try and break that one down for you guys as well. Uh, the new Crucible maps are going to be coming. The new Crucible mode for competitive. Power Matters and Iron Banner. Uh, In-game lore, there's going to be bounties at the destinations. Maybe Zer is going to have some bounties. He might have an exotic one. Maybe, I'm hoping. Crossing my fingers on that one, but we don't know. All that stuff is going to be coming in Forsaken, but we do have probably a TWAB to cover coming Thursday. That's going to cover anything that wasn't in the giant patch notes coming tomorrow. And what do you do in the next week? Nightfall scoring is not going to be active, so don't worry about trying to do that one. Um, I don't even know if the prestige is going to be a thing. Uh, in the next week, what I would say is do try and do as many bounties as you can to fill up this screen with mostly bounties. Uh, consumables, try and farm as many as you can. The ones that are going to matter are going to be as follows. Vanguard tokens. Crucible tokens. Obviously, you can see I haven't turned in Crucible tokens because there wasn't much of a point. Um, those are the ones that you're going to keep. And also Iron Banner tokens. Trials is going to be on hiatus, hiatus for all of Season 4. It's just not coming back. They're working on fixing it. Um, faction rallies are on hiatus for a while. We don't know when they're coming back, but hopefully that will get a boost as well. So those tokens may stay in your inventory, may not. Um... Vanguard research tokens for Ikora, these are flat out just going away. So if you have enough to turn in for anything just for a piece of armor, dump them, use them, because they're going to be gone. The things that you're going to want to farm and hold on to and not turn in, tokens, I would still save like Nessus tokens, Arcology tokens, IO tokens, EDC tokens. Hold on to those because you're going to be turning those in for still reputation levels when Forsaken launches. The reputation's still gonna get you levels, probably gear from that, you know, vendor. If there's a certain gun that they have, you can get random rolls on it for year two from turn-ins, potentially, as you level up. Now, buying stuff from a vendor will not get you random rolls, so you can't just, like, pay for it from Glimmer and things like that, but potentially leveling up a character is possibly gonna be a chance for random rolls. We're just gonna have to see, but it will for sure level the character up that you're dealing with, like the NPC. So EDZ 790 is probably going to get me quite a few levels at Devrim K. And if he has a reputation thing going on where you get to level 10 and you get something from him, at least I'll be able to knock that one out fairly quickly. The main thing you're going to want to focus on and mainly hold on to is your materials from each planet. Phase glass needles, your alkane dust, seraphite, your dusk light shards, Simulation seeds, and I feel like there's one more that I'm just missing, but it's probably on air and I'm not staring at it. But those are your main ones, and the green ones are the only ones that are going to continue to drop. Anything that you currently get EDZ tokens from now is just going to drop Dusklight Shards across the board. Whether it's public events, whether it's random, you know, chests that you open, whether it's patrols, um, high value targets, 
anything like that is going to turn into dropping Dusklight Shards. So no longer going to get tokens. Your tokens will not go away, but once you turn them all in, you're not going to see any more of those. You will potentially, sounds like, be getting Crucible and Vanguard tokens, because those are just still going to be a currency. But as for your materials on each planet, those are pretty much going to be it. Now, why are these important? Because you're going to be using these for infusion in certain things. I don't know if it's going to be, you know, any gun that drops on EDZ might need, you know, Dusklight Shards. Anything that drops on IO might need Phase Glass Needles. So if you want to farm anything over the next week, run around and pick up as much materials as you can as you're working on doing bounties and other things. One thing that would help, for example, detects caches or resources within a 30 meter range while on Nessus. So the ones that I'm going to be picking up, I know I've picked up a buttload of these things, so I'm surprised. Here they are. So it's on the Microphasic Data Lattice. So it's the Data Lattice on Nessus. And basically, as I'm wearing this ghost, if I'm driving around on Nessus, I can actually see the resources with their little triangle. So if you're trying to farm this stuff, go search through all your ghosts and see what you've got. If I've got any that are helpful for other planets, then that's going to be a good thing to wear as well. Uh, detect resources within a 30 meter range while on the Moon Titan. Go ahead and lock that one in so I can use that one later. Detect caches or resources on a 30 meter range while on the Hellas Basin. So that will help me with Mars. Go through ghosts. I have quite a few of each. I mean, same thing on all these places, or if you're going to run around and farm, at least have a ghost on you so you can pick up all that stuff as well to see caches, to see the resources, and the resources is probably your bigger one. I actually have my star map shell, which I love, and I can see caches everywhere, but unfortunately, as I'm looking for resources specifically, it doesn't have quite the range on these, but I'll be able to actually see the resources a little more readily, so if that's what you're farming, I would go for those ghosts. That will be a good thing to farm. Crucible tokens, Vanguard tokens, those are still going to be something to farm, so do some strikes, play some Crucible. That type of stuff is what you're going to do over the next week. Weapon telemetry is still really sad because it does not do squat for reputation, but maybe. Uh, any of these boons of the Vanguard you've got, I would probably hold on them onto them until later on. The expired ramen coupon, which really unfortunately doesn't lead to much, but I'm still holding on to it, just maybe they'll uh, mess with us later on. But that's the idea. Those are what you're going to farm, want to farm for. Any tokens you can get your hands on, any materials, any more mod components that you can get uh, your hands on before Forsaken starts is what you're going to want to farm for. I know this is a long video and this is not everything. The reason I didn't go into time to kill or changes in exotic weapons or exotic armor. There's going to be a full giant list of patch notes and I would rather go through all of that when we have everything in one list. We have partial patch notes. So we have some exotic changes, some grenade changes and things like that, but we don't have the full list yet, so I would rather do that all together for you guys. But tomorrow a lot of things are changing, so if you need to clear out your vault, do it tonight. If you need to make a little space, you can by deleting your legendary mods and just hold on to those mod components. We've got weapon slot changes coming tomorrow, so make sure you have some space on all your characters. I've got to make sure I do that one tonight because I don't want to lose anything. So make sure you have space in your Postmaster. Move all that stuff into your vault so you've got plenty of space as much as possible. Only have probably a couple things in there. And you guys know the full list. I will put a link below at the Reddit thread that basically has all of this, which is a pretty good summation. Has the list of the weapon types that are going to move around. It's got the list of the kinetic, you know, the power weapons that are going to turn into kinetics. Um, all of that stuff, there's two Reddit threads that covers almost all that, so that is linked in the description below. And one more time, I am doing that giveaway for Forsaken, so check out the link below. Uh, get yourself entered to win. Honestly, it's just social media links and things like that, so if you guys follow and support me, it is appreciated. Now, one thing about that giveaway, I know it says support subscribing on Twitch. Mostly, if you have a free, you know, Twitch Prime subscription and you want to use that to get a lot of entries into the contest, that would be appreciated and it would support me as well. So that one is worth more, I know that, um, but those Twitch Prime subscriptions, I know you only get one for a full month, so I did want to make sure and value that one equally for you guys, so if you did want to support me, that helps me out a little bit. If you've got Twitch Prime already, it's yours, so use that as a nice little boost in the giveaway. But thank you guys very, very much for the continued support. Um, it's been awesome. Uh, love seeing you guys joining us for the Flashpoint discussions. It's really cool when I go live on Twitch just goofing around. I'm going to be doing more of that in Forsaken, probably playing a lot live, maybe even without commentary. So if you want to watch, you can. Uh, but generally, I'll be on there quite a bit, either, you know, working on solos, working on whatever activities. There's going to be a lot, a lot to do. 
Uh, but yeah, see what you've got to do tonight. Kind of get you everything square before reset. Times, by the way, really quick. August 28th, the servers will no, you will no longer be able to log into Destiny at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. 9.40 a.m. Pacific, you will be kicked out at this time. Solstice of Heroes, Moments of Triumph will be done. So, 9.45 a.m. Pacific. For me, Central Time, that's 11.45 Pacific Time. That will all be closed. 2 p.m. Pacific. So, 4 p.m. Central Time for me, 5 p.m. for you East Coasters. And wherever you are at around the world is when the maintenance is expected to conclude. But again, have it down for four hours. During that time, you should be able to download the update. So if you need to make sure your PlayStation's ready to update, that is very, very important as well. Um, so those are your downtimes. Make sure you remember that. If you're trying to finish anything, anything up, whether it's your inventory, whether it's your vault space, whether it's Moments of Triumph, Solstice of Heroes, all that stuff, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, basically is when you consider that stuff to be done. And in 15 minutes after that, if you're in the game, you're going to be kicked out. So... That is when the big patch, potentially, like, people have seen, like, 46 gig or something crazy is coming for Forsaken Preload. And then the week after that, I work that morning. But I should be off in time to play maybe a couple hours later. And I'll be playing that thing until I'm blue in the face. So I'm looking forward to Forsaken, guys. We've got a lot of stuff coming. Spin this next week. Hit me up on PC if you guys want. I've got a Discord channel. Uh, I've still got a clan that's open. It is, obviously, if you guys want to join us. Feel free to. Legendary emblems only. Still small, not too crazy big. So especially on PC, if you guys are looking for uh, somebody to play with, I would love a steady group on there to be able to run activities with because some of my friends who were playing in the beginning of Destiny 2 have tapered off. So the more the merrier. Let's get a new clan rank knocked out. And I think that pretty much wraps this one up. So Forsaken, we'll get some details about that one later. But for now, patch 2.0.0 comes tomorrow. Lots of stuff to look forward to, some stuff to try out. Gambit is this weekend on Saturday at noon central. Remember that. It's basically Saturday's reset, whatever that time is for you. That daily reset is when Gambit will be live. Everyone can try it. Check it out. Should be a lot of fun. But as always, you guys can find me on twitch.tv slash ebontis, twitter.com slash ebontis, and right here on YouTube. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you guys haven't. You know a lot of content will be coming to you. Uh, Forsaken is going to be having me playing a whole bunch, so I'll be getting you guys as much information on the daily as I can, make videos and play and make videos and play. It's a fun balance. Um, and also, if you guys do subscribe, hit that alert bell. Keeps me in your feed, keeps me active for you guys so you know what I'm bringing to you. But thank you guys very much. Leave a comment if you did enjoy the video. Hit that like button. And if you didn't, at least if you hit that dislike button, let me know why. I know there's one or two people out there occasionally give me a dislike, and I just would love to know what I could do to make my videos better. I know this one is long, that could easily be a reason to downvote it, but there's a lot of information to cover, and I wanted to get as much info to you guys as I could. So, hopefully this is not too little too late, but also gives you some stuff to do over the next week. So thank you for tuning in, have yourself a great, great week. We are so close to Forsaken, I'm going to jump out of my skin, and on that, I will wrap it up. Have a good afternoon, a good morning, or a good evening, wherever you are at around the world. Have a good one, and I'll see you soon.